Welcome to Journaling with Nature, the podcast for those who want to turn curiosity into wonder, a pencil sketch into a rabbit hole of discovery, a moment of stillness into a life full of joy. I'm your host, Bethan Burton. Let's open the pages of our nature journals and explore this world together. Hello, this is episode 117. Welcome again to another solo show, another chat about nature journaling ideas and prompts. So right now it's evening as I record this and we've just had an incredible afternoon rainstorm and I can hear such happy frogs (laughs) out my window just talking, just enjoying the water. It's such a beautiful sound, it's such a joyful sound after a very hot day to feel the release of that heat in the rainstorm and then just the happy frogs making their sounds. So last time we did a prompt episode, we talked about getting comfortable. I was saying that one way I make myself comfortable is to bring nature treasures into the house and journal at my table. And I find that this is a really relaxing way to journal and that I'm able to focus because all the external things are removed and I don't have to worry about mosquitoes or sunburn and all that stuff. But I do really love sketching outdoors and I think it is the very best way to connect with nature because you get to engage all of the senses at once and experience the smells and the feeling of the wind and hear the birds and everything else that comes along with being outdoors. So in an effort to make my nature journaling kit more useful for getting comfortable outdoors, I noticed one of my family members preparing to throw away an old foam yoga mat and I grabbed it and I chopped it into squares and now I have one small square of foam in my kit which I can use to sit on when I'm sketching in the field. Another thing I have changed recently is that when I run the Brisbane Nature Journal Club meetups, I bring along some mosquito repellent. We had one gathering where the mosquitoes were so bad it was impossible to concentrate. Thankfully, at that meetup, one participant had some mosquito repellent and it was shared among the group. And since then, I always bring it along. So I'm wondering if you've been making yourself more comfortable outdoors so that you can focus on the work of enjoying nature and putting that down on your page. That was the prompt for last time, and since then I published my conversation with Lisa Spangler, a watercolour artist from Texas, and she talked about something she calls nature spots. If you haven't listened to this episode, nature spots are just little circles of colour which represent the colour of the landscape and the plants and animals and wildlife within it. It might be the colour of a leaf or the colour of the water during a visit to the beach, the colour of the breast of a robin you saw during a nature walk, or whatever else feels significant to record while you're outdoors. It's a very easy and accessible nature journaling practice, something you can do in just a few moments but that can have a big impact. It can connect you with your surroundings in a really deep way. So you mix up your watercolours to match your subject and then you make a spot and then you write what that colour is representing. And that's it. Simple, easy and so much fun, especially if you love colour mixing. A couple of weeks ago I had a meet up with the Brisbane Nature Journal Club and I thought it would be fun to try out the nature spots idea. So we met as a group at a place called Roma Street Parklands, which is a lovely cultivated garden right in the heart of the city where I live. The practice made me really sensitive and in tune with colours as I wandered around the gardens. I found some amazing flowering gingers and I was drawn to the earthy tones of a bamboo stem and so many other things. In Brisbane parks we always have a lot of water dragons which are large lizards and if you asked me what colour they were before this particular outing I would have told you that they were grey. But being so in tune with colour, I was observing them much more closely and it's not so much grey as yellow grey or even yellow khaki. It was such an interesting colour. I feel like our vocabulary for naming colours is really very limited. But anyway, it was this more earthy yellow than I had imagined and I only noticed it because my eyes were tuned in and looking for colour. There's a place near my home, a route which I drive every day when I'm taking my son to school. And along this route is a dry sclerophyll forest. 
and it's an area that's burned regularly using controlled burns and so the base of the tree trunks are all charred and at the moment the leaves of these trees are an incredible mix of earthy browns and deep maroon and the black of the charred trunks and it's a palette of colors that pleases me so much to pass through every day and I plan to go there and nature journal the colors very soon and creating some nature spots seemed like a really perfect way to capture this palette. So I propose to you that our prompt for this week is to create a series of nature spots to represent nature near you. I'm thinking I might try and paint one nature spot each day for a week and you could do the same or you could just do one or more nature spots during your nature journaling session. If you'd like to know more about creating nature spots, I'll leave a link to my conversation with Lisa in the show notes and I'll also link to Lisa's website where you'll find all the information you need to get started. I'm excited by this one because I love colour and I can't wait to see what you create. Thank you so much for listening. See you next week. 